Hello and welcome to the Thursday, September 8th, 2022 edition of the Sands and at Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I wrote up a quick vulnerability scan I spotted against our own Internet Storm Center website that attempted to detect deserialization vulnerabilities. Now, probably no secret that our website is running PHP, so does PHP have deserialization issues? Sure, it may. Any object-oriented language can be used to create code that's subject to deserialization vulnerabilities. So it is not a Java or .NET only vulnerability. That's of course where we most often talk about deserialization vulnerabilities. But any object oriented language where you are instantiating basically arbitrary objects uh, without uh, taking the necessary care uh, are susceptible uh, to deserialization vulnerabilities. All it takes is really a gadget, as they call it, an object that can be used to execute arbitrary code as it is instantiated. In this particular case, they used a well-known gadget for PHP, the Guzzle HTTP uh, object. This is a simple HTTP client, a little bit sort of an abstraction of a curl, which sort of comes built in uh, with uh, PHP and has been well-documented in how to use it in order to exploit deserialization vulnerabilities. Like I said, this was a vulnerability scan, so it only attempted to exploit or execute PHP info, which of course would basically just uh, deliver some details about the PHP configuration on the system if we were vulnerable, which we weren't. And if you're following Brad's malware analysis uh, diaries, you probably remember him talking about malware that's part of the TA505 group. It's a very prolific crimeware family, and the write-ups that Brad usually uh, produces are talking about the victim's view, basically what does the malware do on the infected system. What they don't show is the attacker's view. Threat intelligence company ProDAF now released a very detailed paper that is describing Tesla Gun, which is part of of the framework, the interface that's being used by TA505 to control infected system. Tesla Gun is a very functional and uh, web-based admin interface. It reflects some of the business objectives of the malware. For example, systems with RDP access can be marked for further exploitation or for resale if they figure they're not worth sort of the effort uh, to work on them further. Attackers can also then directly uh, send commands to a set of systems with uh, just sort of one simple uh, click. In that it reassembles uh, some remote administrative uh, tools. Overall, a good write-up uh, showing a bit what the other side of malware looks like. And yet another reminder from Cisco to finally toss the end-of-life small business routers in the RV series and, well, basically upgrade them into the next trash bin. Cisco announced an authentication bypass vulnerability in these devices, allowing anybody to connect to the VPN server implemented by these devices. No patch is planned to be released as these devices are no longer supported, which leaves the trash bin as your only option. But there is another workaround and that's also, well, just disable the VPN server. But remember, that's an ongoing thing. If you had a number of vulnerabilities in these devices that have not been patched because they're end of life. And when Linux-based IoT devices are exploited, we often deal with Mirai-like malware that, uh, well, it's not hiding. It's very aggressive in how it's scanning and it's easy to detect if you're at all looking at your traffic. But uh, not all Linux IoT malware is that easy to spot. And that's sometimes the problem where uh, things like Mirai are hiding uh, this sort of more sophisticated 
activity. One example is the Shiketega uh, malware, at least that's how I think you pronounce it. It was uh, written up now in a blog by AT&T's Alien Labs. As we often see in desktop malware, the malware is broken up into multiple stages. These stages sort of load each other one at a time. One of the components, for example, is the Metasploit Metal Meterpreter. That, of course, allows full remote control of the devices. It also attempts to exploit the approach escalation uh, vulnerabilities, which we don't see, for example, in uh, exploits like Mirai. They just log in as a root for the most part, if they can. And then it also uses some obfuscation techniques and encoding in order to make simple signature-based detection more difficult for a command and control infrastructure. They're using legitimate cloud services. Of course, also a very common uh, trick. For more details, well, uh, see the AT&T blog uh, that's linked to in the show notes. And with that, thanks for listening again and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.